it's worth noting here that how I interpret what I see on the footprint will, will vary depending on context. So when you see an imbalance like that, okay, a big degree and variance between the volume traded on, on the bid and ask, simply more buyers hitting the offer than, than sellers hitting the bid. It's, it's often going to be on a breakout, breakout which will sustain it itself. But if I saw that same imbalance, a string of zeros on the bid after an extended move up, I'd be, I'd be more likely or ready or prepared to interpret that as exhaustion. Okay. In that case, it's, it's more likely just a flurry of stops and or late buyers. Uh, and of course, if there are no new high time frame buyers or influential traders coming in at the highs, then that move's going to fail. It's going to collapse back in on itself. So, Depending on context, as I explained in the, in the webinar on false breaks last week, that's something I look to fade, a string of zeros that are at an extreme, especially if prices come up and hit some significant sell-side liquidity. I'll just draw it out for you, okay? So if price has been trending down, and then you get the, the kind of scenario I just described, there's your flag limit facing ahead of the level, um, aggressive buying. You, you'll almost always get um, that imbalance in here, a string of zeros on the bid, because you've got, um, you've got people stopping out here. The key here is context. When price is trending down and has been for a long time, this kind of breakout is much more likely to sustain itself. Because at this point, you've got um, high time frame buyers and sellers are likely starting to look weak. If I had the same thing after price had been trending up, maybe you get an illiquid move through the highs. You'll also get an imbalance here, a string of zeros on the bid. Those are your stop outs. But this is the kind of move I'd be much more likely to try and fade, especially if I saw absorption here. Okay. Down at the lows, if I saw absorption in here somewhere, um, I'd be much more reluctant to fade that. Okay. If I see it at the highs, that's something I'm looking to sell. Does that make sense? They're both kind of indicative of an illiquid move. The difference is one is more likely to sustain itself. So it's really important that you don't base your trading decisions solely on the footprint. Context is so important. And as always, it's the same, it's the same principles. Where is there liquidity and where is there not liquidity? The footprint just allows you to see how traders are interacting with that liquidity. So just, just, just to summarize, on a breakout, you want to be looking for an increase in volume, a large delta. That's your trigger. And if price breaks out, um, you should generally expect imbalance, a string of zeros on the bid or on the ask if it's breaking down. But um, be wary when you see imbalance at an extreme. So at the top of a thin or illiquid move or after an extended or, or overextended move up, because in that case, it's more likely that you're looking at exhaustion. Uh, and if you get that imbalance followed by absorption, so a large delta over a very few price points, there's, there's a very good chance that that price is going to reverse. Okay, so it's a tool which you can use to support your decision making to, to confirm or deny whether or not the kind of order flow you're looking for is present, not from which to derive trade ideas. Okay, so it's a tool for timing. It doesn't tell you where to trade, but it can help you decide when to trade.